thanks very much again for joining me. And today I thought I'd do a, a river scene sort of flowing through the forest. So this is just clean water on the paper. Fabriano watercolour paper. And this is going to be raw sienna. Starting at the top, working my way down the paper. Just raw sienna on its own. All the way down to the bottom. And I'm just going to dip the tips of the water dips the tips of the brush into the water, add a bit of ultramarine, a bit of cadmium yellow and then a bit more yellow, it's quite a dirty, I hadn't really cleaned it from the last paint and I did so just add a little bit of muck, muck on it it all adds to the, the character I think of the painting, I think people are The, the, the other palette's too clean, you know what I mean? I like to have a bit of mud on it, you know, get all the colours mixed in amongst it all. You can get quite clean colours when you mix them using the big brush. Even if it's slightly dirty, because the brush is so big, when I'm doing like that, see how it, it doesn't take minimum of time to, to clean. Add a bit of ultramarine. I'm running low on ultramarine actually, I forgot to buy some. Just got it stuck there in the corner. Put it down there. And some sort of grass, some sort of shadows down there. So let's just get that dark area in dark, just to start with, so we know where we are, what we're playing with. And get down there. Get a bit more water, I'll just dip the very corner of the brush in the water just to loosen everything up. Comes off the brush a lot easier. And what I might do, switch to the rigger brush, this little brush here, and it's going to these bit of ultramarine, bit of uh, cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to flick in a few trees. Now, these are the most distant trees. Very fans. A lot of these, once the, once the rest of the paint is on, you won't even see them, but you'll just about see these through the uh, foreground and middle ground foliage. Pull down a few reflections into the water. This is likely to be a water area down there. A bit more water. Obviously, this doesn't take as much uh, paint as the big height brush does, so you have to keep reloading. The reason I'm not reloading quite as often as I normally would be is because it's just pick, it's picking up the paint and water that's already on the uh, paper. Pull those down there, a bit like that. So that's, uh, that's the most distant trees in. So what I'm going to do next is some slightly bigger ones but these I'm going to do with a height brush. I'm going to get a bit of burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine, a little bit of cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to sort of, the paper's still quite wet. So these will, these will soften off. And some reflections, don't forget the reflections as you're putting them in. Just watching all that water build up at the bottom. So a few more on this side, one there, one there. And, there. and I think I'll save what's left then for the for the foreground. So I'm gonna clean the brush. Take the excess off on the tea towel. So I always hold this tea towel in my left hand. Because I hate it holds so much water. I remember I used to struggle when I was first beginning. It used to take forever to get to this stage, which basically just a clean, just a clean damp brush like, like what you start with. But all I'm doing, I'm just taking what I can up on there, on the edge of the uh, on the lip of the water, and then take the rest off on the um 
cheat tile and you're back to a very clean dry brush pretty quickly a lot quicker than I used to be anyway right so I'm going to work out now where where we're coming where the, the lie of the land so I'm just propping in some cadmium yellow just to act as a, as a guide then and that's going to come somewhere down there like that and this one's going to come slightly further forward and then be a bit, bit more shadows in this area yeah I'm just working just putting in some rough apple. This is just like my equivalent of using a pencil, just to sketch out roughly how the land's going to lie. So the paper's stretched slightly, so I'm just going to refix it on this right hand side, pull it flat against this piece of plywood, and then I'll be good to go again. Check there's no build up of water at the bottom of the paper, just soak that up with the brush. Very simple way of doing it. You can use a tissue if you want. And what I might do, what I did forget to do then is uh, put those in, just suggest a few little twigs and branches coming all over the place. Don't forget a few reflections as well. And again, a lot of this I'm just picking up the, the, the paint that's it's already, already on the paper. If this was dry, this, this wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do this. I'll do for that. Now what I'm going to do is put in some stronger, yet stronger branches, twigs. So this will be like our third layer. Now as the paper's drying, it's going on thicker and thicker, stronger and stronger tones, pushing the most of the first stuff we did right into the background. So what I'm doing now, a bit of burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine. It's quite a dark colour. So these will be sort of dark trunks sort of silhouetted against the light of the sky. I'm going to start off somewhere like that. And so I'm just, just for the, 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 the end I'm just very very lightly. I should use a smaller brush really. Let's just try the smaller brush. At least for these these end bits there tips. Not quite as dark but And what I'll do, I'll just, once I've got all these, and I'll use a bit of dry brushwork and just put a bit of foliage on them. So got another one, oh, I'll tell you what I did forget to do, I've got to put in like a reflection. I'm not sure what, how much of this will be land and how much will be water by the time it's finished. But for now, I'm just going to do that. I'm trying to do these still fairly, fairly thin. Save the thickest trucks for the for the foreground ones. Yeah, some some going up there like that. Yeah, that's reflected down there. And I'm going to have something over on this side. That's crossing straight in front of that one there like that. I think what I'm going to do next is put some dry brush work on. So just taking the excess water up on the towel and the lip of the water jar and then foliage. So I'm just going to go sort of scuff the end up like that on, in the panes. So I've got yellow, just a bit of blue there as well just to vary. And I'm just going to very very lightly and just dab this foliage on and because it's quite dry quite dry it's not blocking it in you can still see through all the gaps in the background you're not painting over everything that you've done right there it's varied it a bit so i'm adding a bit of a bit of ultramarine to the mix Don't 
get the reflections down there and can it also go to a bit of bit of Payne's grey just to darken it even still so these will be the sort of darkest darkest green leaves the ones that are in shadow and also this foliage all over there more down there keep all in the reflections in the water I think what I'm going to do now is define these river banks a bit more so one of these fairly dark so I'm not going to bother cleaning the brush I'm just going to go a bit of brown a bit of blue let's just put these banks in that's something Something like that. What I might do before it dries, just a little bit of scrape in there, just suggest a few little twigs and um, um, stones, rocks, pebbles, all this sort of stuff. A bit more down there. It's, it's quite a dry brush. I ain't got to wait to the to the paint to dry. It's already drying off. I'm putting it on quite thick, and you can just scrape, straight in like that. And then you do it like that. It looks as if the light's sort of coming down, catching the left-hand side of the rocks. That's why I'm imagining the light's coming from there. So on this left-hand side, I'll be doing it left-handed. I'll show you why in a minute. Let's just up in those. It needs to be a little bit, a bit more of a chisel edge there just to catch that. So it's all coming down, something like that. Right, let's do these. Then. I'm doing them left hand because it looks as if the light's coming down there, catch them on the right hand side so the left the left of it's in shadow. Tiny little right, so don't want to get too overboard with the scraping. Just so it looks as if it, it just breaks at where the land meets the water. Um what I might do now is just put some foreground trees in there. Not too many, only a. Uh, well, let's play it by here. Yeah. I don't want too much water. I'm just going to go brown, a bit of blue. I want a nice dark mix because this is going to be sort of silhouetted against the lights coming through the trees in the distance. So, a bit of brown, a bit of blue. Just trying to gather what I can. I've got a tiny little bit of blue left in the corner of my palette. And I'm going to put, work out where's this. Well, I'm going to go. Well, most of the trees are on there, so just to balance it up, I'll put a big one in the foreground somewhere, somewhere like that. I can go up there like that. Do you want any more? Oh, stick one up there like that. Bring that one a bit, a bit further down. Just wondering if I can put any more in. Um, do you want? I might have a big one here actually. I'm going to put a big one on that left hand, right hand side. Big one going right up there, just to fill in that gap. Bring that one, bring it down lower than those. Just, you don't want everything nice and symmetrical, it just looks so artificial. Nature grows all different ways. Um, let's have someone else there like that, a bit smaller. Anyway. Another thing might be up there like that. And you know, it's slowly starting to take shape. So I'm just dipping that in, a bit of brown. Bit of red, bit of bit of brown, bit of blue, just just creating a sort of shadowy colour. I'm just going to put these tree shadows in next. So just adding a little bit more blue to this mix. Not too strong, strong enough just to because you want to be able to see the shadows. So I'm, I'm imagining the, the lights coming from here. So I'm just following the line of the lights. 
and then pop the shadows in. Come that one down there, where I'll just darken those a little bit. Um, some coming from there, and follow that down there. Get them down there, and over there. Shadows in behind these rocks. Right now, let's I really want to sort of dark, it's a real shadowy areas around, so I'm just going for general shadowy colour on my brush. I'm just going and then the reflections as well. So these are quite shadowy, and these down reflections. It's going to be quite dark around there. This is in shadow. Put this up there. Shadow of foliage up there. A bit more in the areas, nice, quite dark. That sort of lights lightens up a bit in the middle, so I'm not going to touch that little bit there too much. Just scrape a few little rocks amongst these. I think all I've got to left to do now is just put a, a fisherman, it's just act as a focal point on the um, horizon line there. So I'm just mixing a bit of, bit of cad yellow, a bit of ultramarine. I don't want this too strong because I want it to sort of blend in, blend in with the background a little bit. So I'm going to put him there and then just that little, little bit. So starting off with a like a, with a head, like a little carrot shape, bring it right way down to the bottom. Put it on there and then. So there's, there's his rod. And I'm just going to put a little reflection in the water down below. And again, a little rod there. Just give you a little focal point to the scene. Sticking with the rigger brush. Then just pop a little bird up there. Have another bit of, bit of life to it, and then last but not least, right in the corner, I'm just going to stick my name. Sign this one somewhere down there, out of the way. Just about readable. Right, let's see what it looks like with the main so This is our finished painting, so if we go and have a closer look at it. Starting with the background, see I started off, there's about three or four different layers of trees with the most first ones I put in using the rigger brush while the paper was still wet. You can just about see them here blending amongst all that sort of distant foggy foliage. There was another layer, so you see this layer, again lighter tone one, put in with the chisel edge tape brush, another one there, and then sort of another layer with these darkest tones still put in as we come closer and closer to the foreground. And then in the foreground, the darkest, biggest trunks yet, silhouetting against the light. Deliberately, like places like here, where I've deliberately put them across the lightest area to provide maximum contrast. Maybe this one here could have just cut across there, might have looked a bit more dramatic. And then in the middle ground, we've got mixtures of lights and shadows. I've scraped in a few rocks even there just to break up the darks, give the effect of the light sort of coming through the trees in some of the rocks there. A few of these bushes are silhouetted against the light coming through the scene. And then as I darkened those river banks then just scraped in a few rocks and pebbles there just to divide where the land meets the water. And then just added a few darker, using the same mix as I've done with the shadows here just to create some shadows in the trees amongst all the foliage. Don't forget to put all your little reflections in the water, it just helps create the illusion. Um, of, of water a bit, 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 bit better 
and then just you know, on the horizon line there we've got our little little fisherman there providing a the focal point for the scene. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you were painting along with me, thanks for watching. Any questions please don't hesitate to ask and I'll see you again soon.